there's not many people I can ask this question to. You and, you know, Jericho and I guess Sting, and there's maybe not, not many others, but you've worked for WWF, WWE, WCW, and AEW. So you've worked right. for Bischoff, for Vince, and for Tony Khan. Right. How do they all differ as bosses? <clears throat> as bosses, um, they're all completely unique and different. Um, the the one thing they do have is they have and I they have the ability to manage a lot of egos. I think when you're in that position, you have to be able to manage egos and you have to have a vision of where you're going and what you what you want to see. I think Vince was. Um, a very um, solid um, force to deal with. You know, you did things Vince's way and that was, you had to have a good case. I mean, sure, you could barter for something, uh, but Vince pretty much uh, had what he wanted to be done. And when he relayed the information to you, there was very little room for debate on it. I mean, if you could present a good case, um, things might change. Um, I think Chris Jericho is only one of the best that I've ever seen in my entire career, the ability to, to communicate to Vince on how Chris Jericho should do things. I think one of my favorite times in my career was being Chris's partner because I never had to, I never had to, to do the politicking or the uh, angle arguing or any of that. Chris, just Chris did all that. You know, Chris had that, that, that drive to, to see his vision. Um, uh, Tony is a lot different in the fact that Tony has a vision, but Tony is also very um, just appreciative of what you do, appreciative when you come through the curtain, appreciative of your effort, um, you know, and uh, Tony is, you feel like Tony is growing with you, um, but his managerial skills are different, where with Tony, it's, it's always people first, you know. Um, Bischoff was really smart on what he wanted to do. And he, he, Bischoff really understood how to seize an opportunity and run with it. Um, that was, that was Eric's thing. And, and Vince had the ability to, um, to set everything in motion so that all you had to do was fill your slot here. You know, uh, he had a plan, he had a vision. I remember Vince used to have, he used to have in his book, he would, you would know who you were working with the next 10, 11, 12 months next year out who you were working with for the next year you know so that was a very structured environment in wwe um then to leave that structured environment and with tony it, it is about input it's about you know how do we make my personality and what i want to do fit with what tony wants to do what aew needs uh, he's still the boss there's no if ands or buts about that like the inmates aren't running the prison by any means you know, but it's just a, a, a little bit easier environment to uh, to talk to and, and to to pitch your ideas like with sometimes with Vince, because he's done this for so long and, and he's uh, a generational owner, second generation owner. Um, Vince has a structure on what he thinks works and it's pretty much his way and he's the boss and he signed the tickets and that's the way it works. So if you're going to have an idea contrary to Vince's, it better be a really good idea. You know, and, and, and I've done things with this before where we've talked about it and, you know, the idea did have merit and he understood it. But um, very rarely was I ever able to change Vince's mind on anything. Very rarely. It just it just got to a point where I just felt like, yeah, well, he probably knows what's best. You know, you know with Tony, uh, Tony really takes advantage of my experience and the things that I've done and really appreciates my input and not just on myself, but input on on our shows and what we're doing and talent that's, that's improving and, and, and just the concept of what we're doing. Cause I understand what Tony's building and that excitement and synergy is a uh, incredibly positive environment to be in, you know, um, that's the difference, you know, and, and Eric, I think Eric was just like uh, at the time because no one had ever been through anything like the Monday night wars, the attitude errors or the way the business got popular and the kind of ratings were pulling. You know, Eric was seemed like to me like a guy that was doing everything he could with his foot wide open on the throttle. <laughs> he, put, he put his foot on the gas and uh, and there we went, you know, and it was a great time where back then you could really do nothing wrong in the wrestling business attitude. I mean, we blew up cars and, and uh, <laughs> did all kinds of crazy stuff in the attitude. Era. And then the business changes and evolves and that same energy. 
I think that same energy from the Monday Night Wars, we definitely have back now with CM Punk coming back. That same energy I felt in the United Center where I was like, you can feel when things are turning around for the positive, you know, because we've been in a lull, of course, after the pandemic, everybody took a hit. But now to feel that energy back now and the fans are excited about wrestling again, they're excited about wrestling, they're talking about it, it's on their brain. So uh, it's a good time to be in pro wrestling right now. A lot of times I was an attraction, um, which I mean, I've had a great career. I'm not knocking that at all. But a lot of time I was like the building maintenance guy and, and filling all these holes because, you know, I could step into these roles and, and, and help this guy get to the next level or, or this celebrity do this and not really take as many hits on my uh, persona or my image is bad.